Hello, this is John Cobalt from EMD. In this tutorial, I would like to show you how you can create a 3D road in SketchUp and use it uh, for a photo montage in WinPro. So you can see here in WinPro, I have a camera object and uh, with a photo and I have calibrated this in photo montage. And now I would like to create a road that is going here that means inside this very complex terrain, up here and over here and out. So um, this is quite simple to do it. And uh, first I have to define where the road should go and I'll use the road object from WinPro to do that. You can use uh, other objects or you can use shape files as well. When you insert a road object, uh, this is all about the dig and fill and um, also about costs so I'll just leave that on and uh, on the defaults and then I'll click where I want the road to start and I'll create a new road and here are some constraints uh, you can set for this road the width and and the cut and slope uh, angles and I'll leave everything on default except uh, the, the minimum radius for uh, for bends i will set that down because this is a very small scale project and i wanted to be able to make sharp bends here on my road so uh, now it's important not to click too many times not to create too many points when you define your road because you can see how it works is that it is following your lines and adding the curves to uh, go from one line to the next line. So you don't want many lines, you want very few lines, just enough to define where you want your road to go, like this. And you can see if I make it bending too much, you get this red stop sign and that means uh, you got something that won't work. So avoid that. If, if it's, uh, you, can, you can set down this uh, bending uh, radius to something less if you have a problem, uh, but avoid the red stop signs. So now I'll just say I want the road to go down here. Then I'll right click and say stop the road and I'll right click and say uh, leave edit mode. So now you can see here I have um, the terrain profile where the road is going and you can see here it's uh, actually leaving the surface a little bit uh, and here you have some uh, where it goes into the surface. So you have some uh, dig and you have some fill going on here and uh, also over here it's because the, you said that you want uh, mm, mm, there was a maximum steepness on your road it has to to uh, to do something like this to fulfill this constraint so now uh, the next step is to actually visualize it i go into my uh, the sketchup integration tool and then here in WinPro 4.1, you have this uh, 3D creator that can create a, a 3D um, road for you. So here you can see there's a lot of settings here, it, but it's not so complicated. Uh, first of all, you can set up how or where should the road go? Should it follow a shape file or the default is that it should follow a WinPro object and that should be all visible road objects. And I have one road object in my project uh, and it's visible so it will use this one uh, but you can uh, go and, and create uh, another uh, WinPro object exporter so you can use a line object or something like that then you should uh, here again you can set up how uh, the the cut and fill slope and the width of the road should be so this is actually overruling what you set up in the uh, road object but that is to make it work also if you use a shape file or something else. So then uh, the next thing is um, you should define how uh, should the, the road be shown, what texture should you put on the road. And here you can uh, click on this one. It's simply an, a PNG file, as you can see here. And there's uh, several to choose from, from the WinPro installation. And But you can create your own one, so you can add some here if you want. But they should be seamless, so you can uh, they can be attached and uh, to each other and you cannot see where they are attached so that's why we call them seamless but i just go with the default one then are the cotton fill textures here when when you cut into the hill 
uh, there's put some texture here and there's also some texture put here when, where you got some fill and you can use different textures for those. Uh, I'll just try to change the cut texture this up here. I can click here and then uh, it goes into the SketchUp library of landscaping, fencing and vegetation. That's because the SketchUp actually has a lot of these kind of textures that can be um, tiled together uh, seamlessly. And, and that's it's why it's very nice just to, to, uh, to use uh, one of those. So, but uh, you can see there are different selections and there's, uh, I can go into the stone selection and take one of these. If you want to use your own ones uh, that you create, you have to create them in SketchUp and export your own collections uh, of uh, textures. So uh, this one is about how big is this texture actually? Is that something that represents uh, two centimeters or 10 meters of something? Uh, the default is three meters and I'll just go with that. Uh, but you can experiment uh, with this uh, to get something that looks more, most realistic. Then there's something called uh, transparent backfaces. And that means that if you are from your camera position can see the backside of uh, the road or see it from underneath if you're standing low and looking up on your road, then you will not be able to see it from uh, the backside. So because it's transparent so, and that uh, would normally be uh, most relevant to have this check done. Then there's uh, something called Create Outline Polygon, uh, Advanced, I, I've written here. And uh, I'll, be, I'll come back to this one to show you. First, now I'll just say OK. And then I'll take this one that uh, says that when I create this road, 3D road, it will create it both in SketchUp and in WinPro as a 3D object. So I'll run it. Right. So here you can see now it created a 3D object. And you can see uh, here where the 3D object polygons are, and uh, that is, of course, where the road is. And it created uh, the 3D object up here. I'll just rename it to road. So I can remember that later. It goes into the selected layer that uh, is also called road. So now I can go to my camera object, and you can see uh, here already the symbol uh, that shows uh, the polygons from the from this 3D object here. So if I try to hit the render button, yes. So now you already got something that looks uh, quite nice. So you can see here it created some uh, fill here, and this is digged into the surface here and then it used the, the cuts uh, or the fill texture for this. So if you zoom in maybe you can, you, if you're not happy about uh, that this is not looking detailed enough then you should uh, go back into um, here in, in your road exporter setup and then you can change set this to something less then you'll get more tiles, or if you set it to something larger, you'll get fewer tiles in your representation of the fill here. But uh, as you can see, uh, the road texture is following the road uh, path here very nicely. Of course, here now you have to use your rubber here to, to get rid of this that should be hidden behind the trees. Here we can, we have some fill uh, over here and some cut over here. And all this uh, you can um, you can change you know the maximum slope. Here it is actually the maximum slope that you define for your road, and uh, also the steepness of your uh, fill and and cut here. You can set that, and you can change the the width of the of your road and all this. So it's very um, easy to to um, to customize. So so as you can see, this is uh, quite easy. Okay, but now I want to address a small problem you might run into, and that is that the auto erase function is not working very well. And uh, the auto erase is uh, a function that 
erases everything that is hidden behind the terrain in the landscape. So, and, and half the road is that very often, like here in this situation, it's cut into the side of this hill, and then it is actually hidden behind the terrain model. So that would be erased if I used the auto erase function. So that is really annoying if you need this auto erase. And, and here I will reproduce a situation where you do need it. So I have created a PV plant that is, uh, going down here behind this hill. And if I try to render it without auto erase, you can see the problem. Right, so here you can see uh, some strange parts here and here that is actually not visible because it is behind the, the hill. But since I don't use auto erase, it shows uh, up here. So now I'll try to render with auto erase like I would normally do. And I click render. And now you can see it looks much more uh, natural. And it will be very hard to erase uh, these parts manually uh, in, in the situation, in many situations actually, where, where you are doing uh, visualizations of PV plants. So how uh, now I use auto erase and you can see it completely destroyed my road up here. So um, now I'll outline a solution uh, to, to, to handle this. Uh, and at the same time, it will also show how you can uh, make it look nice here in, if you want to use a 3D model. Because if you actually need the SketchUp 3D model, uh, then it, you will have the same problem here because that would also be hidden behind the surface if you export the surface here to SketchUp. So uh, as you'll see now um, when I do the, the next things. But uh, the way I'll do it is that I will export a surface here to SketchUp then I will cut out the road of this surface and then I will export the surface uh, with the cut back into WinPro as a 3D object and use that 3D object as a mask object. And a mask object is something that is new in WinPro 4.1 where you can uh, use an, a mask object for hiding whatever is behind it and uh, not hiding whatever is in front of it. So that could uh, be useful in a situation like this, or if you have uh, a building or something like that in the in middle of a solar PV plant. So that is something that can be useful in many situations, but uh, it can also solve this situation, that a problem that we have here. So I'll just go ahead and I will first go to my SketchUp uh, here, and then I will export uh, a surface. I want to, it doesn't really matter which surface I use, but I'll just use this, uh, the same one as we have here. And then I don't want to resample the elevation model. I will use the real elevation model and I, I take a, a smaller area because that makes the whole thing a lot faster. The bigger the area is, the slower it is. So I'll just take enough to cover my road area here. And this is also something you can do if you find that your uh, auto erase is very slow. You may be, uh, just do it this way instead and you get actually higher quality. Uh, and if since you can select more detail what you export and use for auto erase, then uh, it might uh, be faster than the normal auto races. I'll say OK and OK and then I will run this surface exporter. And here you can see the problem in my 3D model. Uh, so um, now I will go back into WinPro and I'll go into my road exporter. Or, and I'll create this outline, this mysterious outline thing that I had here. And then I just uh, run the, the creator again. Creator or exporter. And then you can see now I have two uh, layers here um, because I exported two times. But this second time I had this um, outline here and that is actually just a projection of the whole road and uh, the cut and fill until on level uh, zero down here. So um, what I do now is I I'll try just to only show the last one I just exported here. And I'll just delete these things because I don't need it. Uh, also, I have it in, in this uh, original export. So what I 
really need this one for, I use the selection tool, I double click it and select this one and I take the extrude tool here and I extrude it up here through my uh, surface. So now I can actually cut it out of my surface. And I'll take the rotation tool, the orbit tool, and then I say I want to show edges and I want to show hidden geometry. So now you can see all the polygons that I want to be cut with this uh, figure here. And the way to do it is I use the selection tool. This one I need to right click on and unlock, double click on it, and then I select all control A. Um, don't take uh, select more than you need, but this uh, will, because then it'll become slow. But this is fast enough in this uh, small case here. Right click, uh, intersect faces with model, and now if I go and disable this, you can see that I have cut out uh, the whole road. And if I again go back and say I don't want to show hidden geometry, I can actually. Now double click to go into the group. I can select this and delete it. And then mission is accomplished. I can show my original road here. And maybe I don't want to see the edges anymore. So now it looks a lot nicer. You can see how it cuts its way through the terrain. You can see the dig and fill over here. There's a few flaws around, uh, but uh, it, it is much better than before. So the 3D model here looks nicer now. And also uh, I can use the selection tool and then I can click on my terrain model here and export that back into WinPro. I might want to select the correct layer here. I go to the road and right click here and say export as 3d object and now you can see i have the whole terrain model in here and up here i re rename that to mask and i will also i need to go into it because if i render it now in photo montage it will simply just enter render uh, this uh, with the text and everything but i don't want that i want to use it as a mask object so editing the 3d object this is the last option here and i'll say okay you can see maybe i don't want to show it as a wireframe on map because then i have all this i can try and disable that just to make it look a little nice out here so if I go back here now, and now I don't want to use auto raise, but I still expect it to look as nice as this because I'm using this uh, 3D object that I exported as a auto raise object. Uh, and in that there was a hole for the road. So now it is very exciting to see if it works. So the road looks much nicer now. And still we had uh, cut out the part that is behind the hill here. So it actually works as I expected. And uh, it makes it possible to overcome this problem with the auto race that doesn't work. So um, I think that's about it. I hope you found it useful. And I also hope that you will subscribe for our YouTube channel so you can see when we, or get notified when we uh, create some new materials. And uh, that's all. Thank you for watching.